Good morning and welcome back to Clundercraft. I'm Natalie and I'm going to be taking you through a little bit of work with a vinyl blade. So part of the vinyl blade activation is that we can do things where we go larger than our cutting mats. So I thought I would show that today and I'm going to very slowly, <laughs> very slowly go through creating a coffee table in canvas. So this could be interesting. <laughs> So first of all, hi mum, and have we got any more hellos to do? Me. <laughs> I'm not saying hello to you, I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I said hello. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra just said good morning. Morning Sandra. Okay, so first of all, if we go into uh, artboard. Deb is in the phone. Hi Deb. So, I'm going to go click where I would usually swap between the 12 by 12 and the 12 by 24 mat and you'll see that we now have a new option which is custom size for tiling Linda and Tracy so if we click on that one hi Linda hi Tracy you can see that it is automatically going to start to enable these settings here where we can set our width and our height so if you're doing this for a wall um, what I would say is obviously you're going to want to set yourself some sort of framework to work in so that you can get some sense of the size. So we're very much working with something that's a very definite size in a coffee table, otherwise it's going to go over the edges. That's it. Without any further ado, let's put in the sizes. So, Monica says hello to. Hello, Monica. So I'm going to have. 900 width and 550 height so there's my coffee table so right now it looks kind of small but what you have to bear in mind is it's huge look we have another Australian we have Lainey 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 so, what I'm going to do next is, first of all, I'm going to put a plain object across our coffee table. So this is going to be the background colour. So if I just bring in a square, I can then drag that to resize it. So I'm going to literally go edge to edge. Now, one of the things to bear in mind is that if you have an object where it doesn't fit with the grid like this snap won't work to snap to the edges so if we go into um, edit instead we can then make sure that we also set that same width and height for our object I'm just going to untick maintain aspect ratio just so I can get rid of that point two. And then we know that they are spot on. Our X and Y, we're going to want to put zero. So again, we know that because we've got the sizes spot on and our location spot on, it's right on the edge of that mat. And if you want to apply a colour to it, you can do. So I'm going to go to my sliders for today. And pale as pale can be but still put some colour in so I'm looking for a sort of beige colour ladies ask which canvas are you using okay so the canvas I'm using is the download one um, we haven't tried it so far in the online one, but I would suggest that for this particular project you are better off working in the download one anyway, so that you can work with things like layers. So then if I go into my layers palette, I can give it a name. So I'm going to call it background. Really imaginative that. <laughs> So we've got a background and I want to lock it, 
so I know it's in the right place I know it's the right size so I'm not going to need to do anything else with it so I can just lock it and then that means that if I try and click it it's not going to activate or move next we want to start creating some detail for our coffee table it's really really subtle it's like a really sort of soft grey creamy colour would you like me to put it a little bit stronger so you can see it? If so, unlock it for a second so I can select it. Let's make it a bit stronger. Oh, put that up, that might help. Oh, there we go. It's a pity you can't put an image into it like you can with Affinity. Because mm. we've got some nice vinyl in mind, haven't we? So, with our background locked, let's start on our next items. So, I'm going to start off by adding... Shall we go playing cards first, shall we? Mm. Yeah. So, I'm just going to pop a rectangle in. And I'm going to show you a really common mistake. So I'm going to go to edit. Still got maintain aspect ratio unticked. And Tracy asked, is the sizing there only because you've activated the final blade? Yes. It is. Yes. We're going to say you do need to have the vinyl blade activated for this function. Okay. So there's our playing card. And what a lot of people would be tempted to do at this point is go, right, okay, I need a frame around the outside of it, so let's do this. And then they'll send it to cut, and they go, well, it only cuts out a rectangle. I wanted to cut the line around the outside. So what you actually need to do is you actually need to create a frame. So the width for your stroke is actually totally ignored by your machine. Okay, so that's the first thing to kind of get your head around is that will only cut just a plain rectangle. So if I take that back down to one. Okay. That's okay. So what I will do is if we go down here to offset, we can go outwards. We can decide how much of a border that we want. 5mm is probably about right, isn't it, for what we have on our one? Yeah. We'll have to give it a nice edge. Yeah, enough to give it a, a nice little slot to sit into. Yeah. So I'm going to go for round corners and leave as is. And go. OK. So you can see straight away put another line round the outside and if we go into our layers we can see that we've got these two shapes here so what we want to do is keep those together so you have two options here and both are technically correct because they're still cut the same way but best practice is to subtract but if you just want to group because that's what you feel confident doing you can do that Carol's asked, is it worth buying the final blade just for these features, even if you're not able to use it in the CL? Very possibly. I will double check that it goes across to the CM correctly first. So um, message me after Carol and we'll try it on the CM and see if that works. Well, when we export it, we'll see. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see whether that one will work actually. So, because we've done our offset outwards, our biggest shape is on the top. So we actually need to drop that down so that it sits underneath our inside shape. We can then select both. If you're going to group it at this point, you can group it. But I'm going to go to Edit and Subtract. And if we stick a colour in it, 
you can see we have a let's go for something different shall we frame that's going to cut out like so into which our playing card can then slot into so now I'm just going to unlock my background temporarily select the two and I'm just going to use my line objects so I want it to line to the centre in both directions and you can see straight away let's pop that into the middle so I'm going to lock my background again because we don't want to actually move it anywhere it's just being used as a guide and if we press and hold alt we can drag out copy and if we press shift it's going to constrain it onto a straight line for us okay now if we do that again in this direction and then select these three like so we're going to go to edit and we're going to use our spacing like that so I did quite a good job of getting those in just the right place but depending on how practiced you are you may find that those jump quite a bit and then I'm going to press and hold alt again and shift and we can drag it and I'm just going to position that last one over our centre one delete our middle frame so we've still got our one underneath and there's our five cards for the centre it's nice and slow isn't it <laughs> okay so I'm going to two card spaces for each player so my advice would be at this point usually to drop down a guide but um, it's not something that the canvas does yet give it time could you put in a dotted line for now so draw like a dotted line from yeah. the bottom and then just delete the dotted lines after yeah I think it might do that anyway just to help me out <laughs> so if I go Useful. Yeah, that's going to be boring. <laughs> so, I'm going to go from that point there. And if we press and hold shift, it's going to keep it constrained. And then click again, and that's going to give us a line. Okay. And then we can line these two up against it. Hello. So I've just taken a copy and just lining that up with that next card here. So you can see we've gone opposites. And I'm going to take that and press and hold shift. So we know it's on the same line. We can line it up to our guide. And there we go. Now the fun bit is going to be when we want to go in the other direction. So if we select these three. Okay. And I'm going to press and hold alt. And then I'm going to flip. So if we flip it like that. And then we can use that to line it up again. Click off it. And we know that there's two of those there, so we can delete that one. So we end up knowing that this space here is equal to this space here. And we can do the same this end. Could you have used the same one you already had and just flipped it back the other way? You could. Yeah. Twice yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter which, yeah, no, yeah, which yeah, way yeah. you do it. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. But you'd, you'd still have to do another copy if that makes yeah. sense. Otherwise, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you'd just yeah. be flipping what you've already yes. yeah, yeah. 
flipped. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I wasn't trying to confuse my eyes. I'm not there. Get that one. So now we've got our playing card slots for our players, the ones in the middle, and then we just need some chips for each person as well, don't we? So we'll do those next. Is have you got enough space to do them across the inside edge so that on so the cards are that side of your chips? That makes sense. Oh, it? and do you do your borders? Uh, maybe, maybe they might want to move down a little bit. But first of all, let's do a chip. So we're going to go back to our basic shapes. We're going to add a circle. We're going to retick maintain aspect ratio so that our circle stays a circle. And the chip has a diameter of 40 mil. So there we go. I'm going to bring that towards the center again. We're going to do offset and we're going to use the same setting so that we keep our borders consistent. And again, that will have put the bigger shape on top. So we can drag that down. Select the two, go to edit and subtract, and let's pop in a different colour. Sarah was just joined us as well. And she's just home after invigilating, reading, and describing a maths exam. Love maths. <laughs> okay, so there's our first chip. So what you want to do is you want to concentrate on how many you mean need, I should say. You were thinking the other side? What down here? Or down there? I was thinking protection for your cards. <laughs> no, this side so when people are dealing they're not hitting your chips or trying to go over your chips, so that this side is so. Ah, but then when you're trying to look at your card you can be reaching over the chips. Put them down the sides, put them down again like we did last yeah, time. Yeah, I was going to say put them down the sides like we did the first time around. Mm -hmm. So you still got access. Yeah. Let's pop them that way. It's easier. So again, we can use our line tools. So we're going to line them to the centre so they're in a nice straight line. We can use distribute so that we know that they're evenly spaced. And then we can duplicate. <laughs> Doing the papers, <laughs> there we go. So we have six little and chip slots. One's fives, twenty fives, fifties, hundreds, five hundreds. Yeah, I can see the cogs going there, friend. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to move these slightly so they look a bit more evenly spaced from edge to card. Now here's another little pro tip to help you. If you are trying to align a shape to a corner, if you pop in a little square, like so, we're going to select just those items so that we've got our, our square there. Then we're going to drag our copy. We're going to flip it so that our square turns to this corner, like so. And then we can position it up to the edge of our background. Then we know that it is in the right space. So I'm just going to get rid of our colours palette for a minute so that we can come down here. So again, I'm going to Duplicate it by holding the Alt key. I'm going to flip it and drag it down to this corner down here. Duplicate it. And I'm going to flip it that way. And position it in there. Like so. And we can then get rid of our 
usko edes. Sä myös vähän uploadit sitten kysymyksiä. So, it, what you'll find is the bigger you work, the more guides you, you will need. So if you're working on a coffee table like we are, you can need lots of guides. Uh, especially if you don't cut your elements out of your background, so if you're not nesting this vine or if you're going straight on top, you're going to need some really sensible guides to help you position it. Take it from somebody that has now done two. <laughs> <laughs> so this will be third time lucky, won't it? <laughs> so we're going to need a deal and a burn. Yes, we need a deal and a burn and a, a place your bids. No, 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 no. I mean, you only play Texas Hold'em, don't we? So we don't play a lot. Okay. So I'm going to pop that in the middle there. Maybe down a bit just to differentiate it from a player. It'd be quite cool to have it level with the bottom of the chips, I think. So let's get my pen tool. And I'm going to go point to point on here as a guide. So let's get that one there. Get, bring it down so it's level with that guide. Like so. And then we can have place your bits up here. So we need four rounds, wasn't it? Because we said the last one wasn't enough. <laughs> Yeah, you can always put the six in again, so you've got plenty. Okay. Um, Sandra's asked advice on which vinyl to use for window decals. Okay. Um, I would use some clean vinyl rather than sticky, unless you want it there permanently. <laughs> um, but you can get some nice clean vinyls, so don't don't think that you're, you're limited. Um, it's either that or you look at temporary adhesive vinyl rather than permanent. So if you're going to use something like your 651, it's going to be stuck on there. <laughs> okay, so we have our beginnings of our poker table. So before what we did was, if we go to text, Huh? You can't do it in the new font. <laughs> mm. You can't do it in the new font because you're not going to be drawing it, you're going to be cutting it. Mm. And I haven't got my vinyl one ready to go yet. It sounds like you do play a lot of card games. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah, top trumps on my favourite, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Honest. <laughs> okay. Christmas are just temporary needed. Yeah, temporary in temporary adhesive or cling. So. Where'd you get that from? Uh, the cling one. You can get some from like Wilco's and stuff. Um, there is some on Amazon, I think, as well that I. But I will have a look after and just see if uh, I can find something that's going to be spot on. Okay, so I'm stretching these so that they're going to slightly overlap our circles. So the idea being that our first letter, so in this case, our uh, P and our E, so first and last, again give us position for us to then do our L, A, C. The bet's not good. Huh? The bet's not good. Oh, okay. That's okay. That's, that fits better. Get him. <laughs> So, 
Let's go there. Make it look a bit more. That's okay. So I'm just going to weld those two together. And because it was a frame to start with, you're still going to see all of your text detail. And weld that one. And weld that one. Okay. What else should I put on it then, Ian? Uh, I didn't do that in canvas. <laughs> I did that in Illustrator. Yeah, yeah. It was a cool logo. Um, or even a poker logo. I'm just wondering if I've still got it actually. Oh, we have. We have. Okay. So, let's say for argument's sake that you're happy with that design, we're going to do a file save as. Poker table version 3. <laughs> T for text and deal. Which way round do you want it? Do you want it that way? Deal left, burn right? Yeah, why not? Uh, Tracy asked, is the white in your touching enough on the edge? Uh, let's have a look. If not, I can. Yeah, just. Just, just, okay. it's a bit misleading because the screen quality that I'm looking at is a bit. And boom. I'm just going to bring that in just a tad. Because you don't want it sticking outside of your box. that one and you can mount that one. There we go, that's not too bad. So we've set up our artboard who are oversized. We've done our artwork and let's say for argument's sake that you know we're, we're prepped and ready to cut. So if we go up to the top of canvas you'll notice that we have a new button which is premium. So if you don't have any of the functions that require it then that will be a brand new one to you and you'll be like oh what can I do with that. So if we go into premium you're going to have another button that says tiling. So tiling if you're used to it doing it with your printer is how you can get around working outside the size of a normal piece of paper and it works pretty much the same way when it comes to canvas so you can see straight away because we haven't hidden our layers it's going to cut it straight out of our background so if you wanted to you could turn that background off and just cut the individual shapes at which point you'll find your tiling changes again you can add weeding boxes. So the choice is yours how you want to work really, isn't it Ian? Mm -hmm. So if you want to cut the design out of the background vinyl, you can do, and then tile it. Or you can just literally have your vinyl on a roll, apply it smoothly to your coffee table, and then just cut out your individual elements to go on top. 
Now from experience, if you're going to do that, what's that? the fourth one. This one? <laughs> that is the little thin strip that goes on the end. Because it's not a... Uh, uh, because oh, it's not an exact square. Yeah. Yeah, you have a little thin section that's just going to go on there. Yeah, I can see, yeah. yeah. A and B4, yeah. So the choice is yours whether you want to inlay it or not. What do you think, Ian? Inlay it, don't inlay it. We definitely if we did. We haven't done that with the No. I won't cut them all on string because we'll be here for ages though. Well, um, um, Sandra said, so would you have to resave as you've done some more work on those bottom cards? So yeah, you just yeah. save it each time that you've done, but you can just use command test to save it once you've done it. Yeah. And you'll notice that it also labels all your mats for you. So you have row A, column 1, row A, column 2, row A, column 3, and then it will go to B's and you know, so on and so forth. Export. It's going to save them all as FCMs. So therefore, yes, you could use it with a CM. Well, yes, because each map would be a separate FCM, so you could put it onto either a memory card, mm -hmm. USB sticks, take it straight up to your CM. Yeah, so if I... Oh, it's not going to let me start a new folder You've from there, but... You've got USB audio in, sweetie. Uh, oh, so I have. So if I stick it in no name, and choose, and then I'll go to Finder, new name, and there you go. Let's put them all in there. So yes, going back to Carol's question, could you use it for the CM just for access to the tidying function? Yes, you could. Yeah. Because you, it doesn't export it as the traditional way, it doesn't send it directly to your machine, does it? So. so if you want to do it so that you are just doing the detail on top, all you would do is just hide that background layer, go back to premium tiling okay thinking about it and then it's just going to literally cut those elements and we can add reading boxes but as you can see on this one because it's covering such a wide area it's not going to make that much difference So you'd almost be better off doing it by hand with a craft knife after. The other thing to note is that there is no overlap as an automatic option. Now overlap can be useful where you want to do seamless joints. So um, for instance you can overlap by sort of 5mm and then trim through it with your knife and then push it back together. When it displayed the different squares, it looks like it's cutting through the cards. Yes. So basically it gets up to its maximum cutting area, as you can see with this one here, and it's going to stop. Then it's going to go on to the next one. It's going to do its weeding box. It's going to cut whatever it needs that's left of this one here as a thin strip. So that is something to bear in mind. If you're working with a design that is tiled, um, it's going to be quite difficult to kind of cover your joins. So that's another case where you could use overlap to help you out a little bit. So for instance with our playing cards you might want to increase our overlap so that it's not going straight through the centre of our frame which is what it's doing up here. I thought it does give you something to line it up with once you've got it cut. Yeah. Horses for courses. 
And the other thing is, um, if you have the yearbook, I think it's in, isn't it? Then you'll be able to see how you then apply it to your table, which is fun. <laughs> don't do it on a very hot day. Certainly don't do it if you're um, feeling emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Stressful day, though, isn't it? Yes, yes. <laughs> Both times. <laughs> Both times are quite stressful. <laughs> and uh, do take care when you're um, trimming your vinyl to your coffee table around the edges as well, so that you don't damage the coffee table, and more importantly, you don't damage you. Personally, on the coffee table, I would say go extra on the side so it folds over the lap because where you've got the lip on that one, yeah, then it protects your edges a bit more, doesn't it? Because we cut it off flush with the edge, didn't we? Yes, and I think because of that, it catches on the edges quite easily. So, I would, from experience, I would say take it over the edge and take it so it's flush with the bottom edge of your coffee table rather than yes, so it's the same depth as well, so you've got a bit of extra. Also, don't be afraid to take it to pieces first, because <laughs> there's nothing worse than trying to deal with legs. <laughs> it's <all> emotional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Sandra Cook said, this is from experience. Yeah, it was yes, this we've done it twice. Third, yeah, this will be our third. And it's never been the same design twice. But what I would say is each time that we've had to redo it is when we've had to move it. Um, they don't move very well, no yeah, matter how carefully you go with it. And the other thing is don't put a tablecloth on top of it. <laughs> Tracy says, can you adjust the red lines on there yourself? So the red lines where it cuts, can you adjust that? The, the down here you mean, so that if you do like your overlap, that's going to make it think. Do, do, do. So by adjusting your overlap, you're adjusting the red line basically. Where yeah. It cuts. Yeah. So the thing to bear in mind is it will still cut this first one in the same place, but then it's going to nudge everything else over a bit, so you do get that overlap that's built into the next one, if that makes sense. So then you place it, you trim it, then do your swapsies. And the other thing I would say is it's a project that you definitely need proper transfer sheet for. The first time we did it, we did it with magic tape. <laughs> that really didn't help my nerves, did it? <laughs> we got about halfway through, I think, before we succumbed and managed to find a, a tiny piece of transfer sheet. <laughs> wasn't it, do you And it was like, like that big, wasn't it, that we did? So Amazing. what, about... Six centimetres square, seven centimetres square. <laughs> bit of... like yeah, it wasn't really big, wasn't it? No. Whereas when we did the blue one, you actually did it as a a full sheet of transfer um, paper. Piece, yeah, so things like your, your five cards in the centre, you transfer it as one piece, if you can help it. <sighs> So the other thing to bear in mind is if you're doing things like overlap, um, you can actually sort that out before you apply your transfer tape to your vinyl. So then when you're working onto your table, it's already done, so you're not having to worry about uh, sorting so overlap. The actual lines on the picture at the bottom, can you click and move those at all, or are they fixed? Uh, they're just fixed. They're just showing you where that overlap occurs. So if I take it up bigger, it should be a bit easier to see it. And Monica says you'll see the lines through the vinyl when placed. Um, yes and no. Um, if you are going to be doing it where you're cutting your background sheet as well, then bear in mind that um, your joins for your background sheet will be in a different place to where they will be on your detail. Okay, because it, it literally tries to save as much material as possible. So, um, where we've got this gap just here, it's going to cut all that out completely. So, you can see it's going to budge that right up into that top corner. So, 
your joins will be offset in that sense. If you are going to just go straight over the top of your coffee table, then you won't have any joins underneath your vinyl to show through. And then just asking what options are on the tiling size drop down menu. So, if you want to do it so that you are using your 12 by 24 mat, you can do it that way. So if you're using vinyl on a roll, so you, you know, so Cricut and um, you can get some other vinyls on the rolls. If you're using Crafty Cutter vinyl, so you, you know you're using A4 sheets, you can set it to A4, which would feel very, very long way doing it. <laughs> You've got letter. A3, if you've got A3 vinyl, if you can get a hold of A3 vinyl, I'd be quite interested to see where you got that one from. And you've got ledger. So bear in mind, while we're talking about vinyl for tiling, because you've got options like the A3, the A4, you could be using your card and doing larger designs with card. So if you're doing something that's 3D, just remember if you are doing something that's 3D, you need to increase that overlap so that you can glue it together to join it. So I know there's a lady who was wanting to do a 10 by 10 by 10 inch box. That's a way that you can do it without having to split it up the way that I had to split it up for her. And Sarah Lou says Crafty could do rolls of vinyl now. Ooh. Cool. Cool. So if you had the roll feeder for the. Yeah, the if X, you. You could use the roll feed. Does it give you an option for the roll it feed? It doesn't give you an option, but I take it that's because I haven't got it installed. Installed. I think it's another activation card. Yes, yes, it comes with an activation card and a certain number of designs as well. Mm. So, so that might be another option. If you have a roll feeder, you could use the roll feed to do it. Which would then cut it. Yeah. But obviously with the roll feeder, you can only use that for vinyl. Um, the, basically the idea behind the roll feeder is it doesn't need a mat because you're only ever going to kiss cut your vinyl you can't go all the way through otherwise you will damage your machine it still need it still take in two strips though wouldn't it because you can only get oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you still only get 300 wide can't you so. yeah you still end up having to do it in, t in two sets of yeah. strips never heard of ledger before what's ledger then speak uh, I believe it, and I could be wrong here. I think it's American size. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it's literally based on like the old counting books. Uh, there you go. It does this because Tracy has the roll feeder. Uh, Sarah really has the roll feeder. Sorry, sorry, Tracy. Um, so when you have the roll feeder, it also gives you the option of roll feed. To cool. Because so. yeah. I know Tracy also has the blade. Sarah Lou. Lou. Oh, we teeth back in today. Sorry. Wrong people. <laughs> okay. So if I go back to A4. It's also a good way, excuse me, of doing a 12 by 12 layer if you've only got A4 cardstock because it can help you out then with sizing. That's cool. Okay. So if we untick the ad weeding box, you can see a bit better then. And also you'll see that things have shifted over because it's not having to allow that extra space for the weeding box to go around the outside. Out of interest, if you come out of the weeding mode now, out of the tiling section. Yep. Does it keep all your layers as is? Yeah. Yeah, it so doesn't it doesn't you, make any difference to your artwork whatsoever. So could you when you come out of the tiling section then rather than have it say, right, I'm gonna cut this bit and put a line there, you could then rearrange it onto your own twelve by twelve mats. No, it doesn't it doesn't move anything to do with your artwork. 
because it can't handle more than one mat at any time in canvas yet. No, but you could have them, so you could overlay them so that you could turn them off like we normally would send a multi layered project. No. It doesn't make any change to your artwork. There is, it's not put joins in, it's, it's still exactly the same shapes that it was before. Yes, yes, I know that. But what I'm saying, if you wanted to create your own 12 by 12 mat, so what, taking the layers that you've created. No, because you, you, you how, how would you do it, Ian? Because you can't change your size, because otherwise you're going to push everything off your mat. I don't think you're either describing what you what you mean very well there, dear. Or... It doesn't it doesn't export it back into canvas. It just saves it as an FCM ready to be to go to your machine. It makes no difference to your artwork. No, no, I know that. You you have no manual control over the, those layouts at all. But that's the point with tiling is that it is literally you then go and apply to surface as is like a uh, almost like a rubber stamp <laughs> job done. Mm. Any questions? Um, Tracy, have we got an Australian link for the final play? But Tracy's uh, Sarah's put up a link. Okay. To a company in Australia, and they're called Koala and Kangaroo. But it, it, it's worth having for the activation, isn't it, to be able to do the things like the tiling. And the other bits that you get with it are in the shapes. And go to the vinyl water blade, you can get the extra bits out there too. So if you wanted to put do a Christmas design, so actually that's really nice. So we can pop that on there if you wanted to instead. And They're a bit nice. Just a pack the vinyl for you, so. Nice. Mm -hmm. Did you see them or not? I can't really see from over here. So. Come, 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 come. So you can see them big and nice. And after we uh, get some cling vinyl, <laughs> how that all the walls are going to get decorated permanently for Christmas? <laughs> Those two mm. in the lounge, down the wall. Maybe. <laughs> I like the Happy Halloween. That's cool. The Happy Halloween is very cool. All the little palm trees. So you don't get lots and lots of designs, but. What you do get are really funky. And the other thing is the weeding boxes as well. But I will show those when we come to do a multicolour design, I think, as they will show up more then. So you can see how they work between the layers. Okay, so there you go. That's the first hour of today with me. <laughs> And then later at 2 we have Ian doing detailed cutting, so he's going to show the finished off card from yesterday and what we did to make it cut nicely and hopefully do, do me some nice detailed scrapbook backgrounds would be nice dear. Design not I was mean like the Paige Evans ones that everybody struggles with. I smile sweetly, you never know. <laughs> so, no more questions? Hang on. Oh, hang on. Oh, before we go, competition. So, if you haven't seen the post on the group, we only had two entries last month. So, um, both Deb and Carol will be getting a little something in the post to say thank you for taking part. And... 
we have a new competition for lockdown. So lockdown is only supposed to last four weeks. It'll be interesting. <laughs> so the competition is Christmas cards. We have three categories. Number one is most innovative. So for this one we want to see something that is totally out of the ordinary, not seen it anywhere before. That's a really good idea. Um, so that's the criteria for that one. We have most eco-friendly. So this could be um, recycled paper, it could be um, biodegradable glitter. There's lots of eco-friendly products out there at the moment. So be sure when you're posting your entries for that one to let me know what you've used and what makes it eco-friendly. And finally we have minimalist Christmas cards. So obviously this year, you know, it's going to be a bit different in terms of budget for Christmas. So we'd like to see what you can do for as little as possible. <laughs> So Mark has asked, would it be easier to design in a rectangle than cut size and cut out cards and chip separately? Run that one past me again. Would it be easier to design in a rectangle or in a shape than change size and cut out cards and then chip separately? So you cut each bit. Um. With a tiling function, um, probably not so much. <laughs> I mean, you, you still do your layers anyway, so like I showed you with the the background, you could do it so that you cut that out and that does your, your removal for your inlays vinyl to go into it. So one of the things we would say from our coffee table is the annoying bit is the fact that it's not smooth. Whereas if you do your inlay, it's going to be nice and smooth. Um, and just asked why the locky down again. Yeah, yeah, we're back into lockdown on Thursday officially, aren't we? So uh, until the second of December officially. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, they said that last time. <laughs> um, that means not using the tiling function, I think. All right. Okay. Yeah, I I will. Um, yeah, without using the tiling function. Mm, how would I do it? I would probably design it outside of canvas if I was going to be doing tiling without using the tiling function. Just because it's with canvas, because you can only have one artboard. Don't say that, Danny. It's a bit of a pain. Sounds it'll be the second of March, I bet. No. It can't be any worse than what they did to us this year. I mean, literally, it, we we just gone into lockdown as it was my birthday. Oh, yes. So my birthday was a bit rubbish. <laughs> Lots of people have had birthdays during lockdown. Yeah, but mine was a Yeah, but mine was a picky, and yeah, it didn't, they didn't exactly give us a lot of warning, did they? No. So. But I will find you a link, um, Tracy, for the auto bleed. I think I have somewhere that may supply it for you, so I'll have a look for you. I'll drop it to you. Anyway. Uh, I've got to learn to divide later. Oh, divide is easy. Um, easy is peasy. Yeah, okay. I'll just save this first yeah. and start a new one. Uh, let's see if we're out again on 2nd December. Not holding my breath. Don't hold yours. Uh, there's no one group on SVG purchases DT. What's up? So, I'm going to go to a 12 by 12 map for this one. And let's go for a design. So, here you go. Wishing you peace, love, and joy. And you can see that it's just one shape. Okay. 
So let's stick a colour in it so that we can see what we're doing. Let's make it bright red. Okay. So there's our shape. And behind that I'm going to pop a square. And let's colour that in green. Like so, pop it behind. Okay. So with your calculations you always need to have two or more shapes selected for them to work. So I'm just going to highlight both of those. And then we have down here divide. And what's that going to do? Is it's going to push everything through everything else. So if we then go into our layers palette, you can see it's taken our two shapes and turned them into lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of other ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to colour each of them so you can see which one is which. So there's our outside of our tree. We then have all of this is from details from out the middle of our tree. So if we pop that into white, you can see that you then have all those elements separate, which means that we can also turn off the tree. So we can just use just the text if you want to. You can use it as a stencil if you wanted to. Um, if you're going to do anything like with HTV, remember to flip it. Yeah, I've got my birthday on the 26th and it's also my eldest daughter's on the 18th as well, so she'll be 18 on the 18th. Yeah. Uh, yes, so lots of birthdays this year and uh, all going to be in lockdown. And wedding anniversary. Yeah, wedding anniversary, yeah. Ten years. Yep. So it'll be lockdown date night. Yeah. <laughs> but Sarah Lou was saying her twin daughters are 11 on the 5th and Linda says her son's 18 on Monday. Both in lockdown. Yeah, it's a bit of a... Yeah. Oh, it's Linda's birthday on the same day as well. So, there we go. There's lots of different okay, ways that you yeah. could use that uh, design. Danny says, need to learn layers, divide, split or something and also import and save to USB if it works and I have correct USB stick. Sorry, what was the turn off the tree bit please? Okay, so all your layers have little eyes next to them and when you make that eye go away it's going to hide the layer so you just click on it. Next to that you have your lock so if you want to lock something so that you can't select it or move it accidentally you can lock it. And so let's put these back into a different colour again because I've put my tree back so we can put them in black. White. White is slightly better. And line colour. I'm going to see if she goes back on the videos we've done quite a lot on cameras, haven't we? And divide. We have, yes. So um, if you go on, there's a video that's on calculations. Yes. Just on calculations. It's quite recent, that one, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite recent. It's about, what, a couple of weeks ago? Mm. Not long. And it, it goes through what they all do and how they work. So it's worth having a look at that one. Yeah, so we go onto the Planet Craft page and onto the live feeds. Um, you can have a look on there. And there's a video called Calculations. Um, Talking about importing, you can import an SVG, DXF, or FCM through the SVG button. So you can then click on it and open it, and that come in. If you want to save it for your machine to a USB, you have to export it as an FCM. Yeah, which is just here, so export transfer. At this point it's going to ask you whether you want to go via the internet or a file. So to do it to your USB, you're just going to pop it as a file. And again, you're going to go to your USB, so in this case mine's no name. 
give it a name. So, Christmas tree. Save. If you're struggling with the format for your memory stick, make sure it is FAT32 um, formatted. If you need help, drop us a private message and I can help you do that via a program called Team Yep. Yeah, if your USB is formatted correctly, there is no reason why it shouldn't work with your machine. So if you are having issues with a USB, 99 times out of 100, it will be because it's been formatted incorrectly. The other one to make sure is that you use a USB extension need in your machine to look after your machine and don't leave it unattended. Because you do get hot. Very, very, very hot. So I think I've covered all of that very quickly. <laughs> so take care for now and Ian will be back at two to do something. Something. <laughs> nice. You're going to do me some nice backgrounds, aren't you? Apparently so. And then I'll pop them together tomorrow. And I may be using some new bits. So you can have some fun. Okay, so take care for now. And we'll say bye.